Quickie one, quickie two. Here's one way you can tell definitively that we're not living in any kind of rape culture. Rape shield laws. As I said in the previous quickie, every defendant has the right to confront his accuser. But this is being abrogated in rape cases, specifically rape cases where a female accuser testifies against a male defendant. The fact is, female rape accusers get special privileges in our justice system. And yes, these acts, including the Federal Violence Against Women Act, specifically apply to female accusers. In fact, the Violence Against Women Act precludes a man being the victim of rape, sexual assault, or domestic violence. Attempts to amend the law to make it gender neutral have failed in the wake of vociferous complaints from feminist groups. Rape shield laws completely abrogate justice. In every other case, a public trial means the public knows who the accuser is. But not in rape cases. The identity of the accuser is protected, a direct violation of First Amendment guarantees of freedom of the press. And notice that the defendant is afforded no such protection. Every witness on the stand puts his or her character into question, and the cross-examiner can attack the witness on that basis, even to the witness's sexual history, except for female rape accusers, to protect them from emotional distress. A cross-examiner also has the right to challenge the honesty of any witness, including, when there's a good faith basis, directly accusing them of lying or infidelity, except for female rape accusers. Rape shield laws have even been used to rule inadmissible emails and text messages from the accuser showing that the sex was consensual, exculpatory evidence that no justice system should even consider excluding. These are limits on the defense that apply only to rape cases, special privileges that show that the female accuser is not being oppressed, just the opposite getting around the protections our justice system affords to every other defendant.